This morning I came to speak to you about Jesus. Hallelujah. It is very important that we know who Jesus is. And it is one thing to know about Jesus because of what the Spirit of God inspired Matthew to write about him. It's another thing altogether to know about Jesus because Paul said some things about him. But this morning, I want us to know Jesus based on what he said about himself. And so I want to tell you 10 claims that Jesus made that makes it very clear he is God. And therefore, if he is God, he deserves your worship. Hallelujah. And if he deserves our worship, we must worship him absolutely. We must give him all the reverence. This understanding will change your service of God. Amen? Amen. It will change your commitment to a church. Now, there are all kinds of churches around. But there is the church that you can experience the Spirit of God in. Amen? That is based on the Word of God. And so the number one, first claim that Jesus made, that I want you to know about him, I want you to learn from him this morning, is that he claimed deity. In other words, he claimed to be God. Now, there have been many religious leaders, none of them have claimed to be God. But this one claimed to be God. That means he's not one of those. You don't put him on the same scale as Mohammed. You can't. That's an insult. Are you here? You cannot place him on the same scale as Buddha. You can't place him on the same scale as any of all those religious leaders. He's not one of them. He is God. The son. Hallelujah. And he made that claim of himself. All these names that I have mentioned, none of them claim to be God. In fact, most of them don't even know what their eternal destiny was going to be at the point of their death. But what makes Christianity different from all others is that the Christian who is truly saved is very sure of his destiny even at the point of death. The Bible says Jesus Christ himself claimed deity. John chapter 17 and the verse number 5. The Bible says Jesus said, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Who, who, Who speaks like this? I had a certain glory with you, Father God. And I want you to glorify me with that glory because I let it, I I just released it so that I can become man to save man. (laughs) Amen. And he says, glorify me with the same glory which I had with you before the world began. Before the world began. Before humans were created. He existed. He's the pre-existent one. And he says this about himself. I had the same level of glory with you, Father. And therefore, I want you to know that I was there with you from the beginning. Before the world began. Amen. In the Christian faith, we are not worshiping three gods. It's one God. One God who exists mysteriously, eternally in three persons. Now, when we try to understand this with our finite mind, we will not be able to understand it. Because our minds are finite and you cannot comprehend this God in this finite mind. And so, when Christians talk about the Trinity, in fact, the word Trinity itself does not exist in the Bible. You can read from cover to cover. You won't find the word Trinity. But the existence of God as a triune being is inferred in the scriptures. You can infer to it. For example, in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, And God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And then God said, We can find the three of them right there. God said. What he said is his word. The Spirit moved. Amen. Then in John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word, W-O-R-D. The word was with God. The word was God. And then we are told that the word later became flesh. That same verse, verse 12. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, verse 14. And he, we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. So the word began to be personified. Are you here? 
But then if we look at Genesis, as the creation began from Genesis chapter 1, by the time we got to verse 26, suddenly a profound statement was made by this God who is creating. Then he said, let us make man. Who is he talking to? Let us make humans like us. Let them have our image. Let them have dominion over the earth. Let us, plural. If he was alone, he should say, let me. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. When man sinned in chapter 3, the Bible said, and he said, the man we created who have sinned has become like one of us, plural again, has become like one of us, Genesis 3. So we find it, I didn't come here to teach on the Trinity, but I'm just laying the foundation for us to see. But at least one of the most profound places we can find the existence of the Godhead as a triune being is graphically illustrated in Matthew chapter 3 and Luke chapter 3 and chapter 4. In this place, we see Jesus the son of God, physically on the earth, right in the Jordan, before John the Baptist to be baptized. And whilst the son of God was right in the water, literally being seen by many, the Bible says as he was baptized and he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove upon him. And then a voice spoke from heaven, this is my beloved son. We see the three this time, really, feely, feely, as the girls who say. Amen. So it's right there. You can see it in the scriptures. So when Jesus is talking and said, the glory I had with you from the beginning, that is very clear. He is God. But let's move further. John chapter 8, we are still proving. He said he has claimed that he is deity. In John chapter 8, verse 56 to 59, we are still on point number one. Jesus was being questioned by the Pharisees and he made a very interesting statement. He says, your father Abraham Rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and he was glad. Hey. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old. And you claim to have seen Abraham. Then he answered and said to them, most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Is that in your Bible? Before Abraham was, I am. Now, it's very easy to think, was this a grammatical mistake? No. You know, grammar, proper English grammar, he should have said, before Abraham, I was. But he said, before Abraham, I am. And it's not a mistake. It's an assertion of his deity that he is God. Because the moment he said, I am, he has called himself by the name God himself called himself. When he met Moses by the burning bush. And Moses gave a lot of, a litany of excuses why he doesn't want to accept the call. Then he then finally said to him, okay, if I go, what should I say is your name? Then he said to him, look at it. Maybe let's, 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 okay, let's, uh, Exodus 3.14. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Are you being blessed already? Yes. The Lord God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said to them, to him, when you go, say to the children of Israel, I am has sent you. Is that in the Bible? He said, say to them, I am has sent you. Let's finish that statement on the, on the screen. Put it properly there. I am has sent you. Amen. He said, when you go, tell them, I am has sent you. The, man who, the one who has sent you to the people of Israel, his name is I am. So when Jesus, in John chapter 8, verse 56 to 59, in the verse number 58, he said to them, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am, it wasn't a mistake. He was actually, literally, eventually saying that actually this is my name. I'm exist, I'm already there. So assuming he was called James, what he was going, he was actually saying was that before Abraham, James. Before Abraham existed, James existed. Are you here? So, and that is why the Jewish leaders... They were not naive. They are not people who were bankrupt of the scriptures. They understand the scriptures very well. All these Sadducees and Pharisees you talk about, they are well versed in the scriptures. They are called the doctors of the law. And the reason is because back then also, for you to become a lawyer, for you to become anyone that interprets the scriptures, you must be a lawyer. Because the law of the state was also the commandments of God. That's why the Bible says, and the lawyers, and the doctors of the law. And he was standing before these doctors of the law. And then he says to them, before Abraham, I am. And when he said, I am, the Bible says they, they took up stones. 
Look at verse 59 of John chapter 8, verse 56. It wasn't because he said he existed before Abraham. No, because he said, I am. Immediately they understood it. That he's saying to them, he's called himself by the name God calls himself. Amen? Are you here today? So this Jesus we are serving is not the figment of the imagination of some Pentecostals. If the Bible was written by man, how is it that it speaks against the desires of men? Amen. The things we want to do, the scripture says we cannot do them. If man created it, how is that possible? If this was the figment of the imagination of some fishermen, how could you study to a PhD level in that one too? May you wake up from the deception of the devil in Jesus' name and recognize who Christ is and commit your life to him. Amen? So the Bible says, Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so he passed by. I love Jesus. He wasn't ready to die foolish death in the name of bravery. When it's not yet time for him to die, he escaped. Sometimes when you run away, it's not that you are a coward, you are wise. It's called tactical withdrawal. You retreat to regroup. Hallelujah. Amen. So he used the very words God had used to describe himself in Exodus. And Jesus made an unmistakable claim to deity before the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin. And in fact, in Mark chapter 14, verse 61 to 62, the Bible says that Caiaphas the high priest, Mark 14, 61 to 62. You need to be looking into your Bibles. I know it's on the screen, but make sure you are also marking it in your notes so that when you go home, you can go over it. That's how you grow as a Christian. Amen. This church is a teaching church. Amen. Hallelujah. Preaching inspires the believer, but teaching establishes the priest. Jesus made an unmistakable claim to deity before the chief priest and the whole Sanhedrin. The Bible says, Caiaphas, the high priest, asked him, are you the Christ? Of the blessed one, he said, I am. Amen. Are you the Christ? The Jews were expecting the Christ and they knew who the Christ was. They knew that that Christ is God. That's why when anybody claims to be that one, they want to stone him. The reason why they had a problem with Jesus is because they have been reading the scriptures and they know he will be a son of David. So they are literally looking for him to be born in a palace. That's the reason why the wise men, upon their inquiries, decided to go to the palace when the star was leading them to a manger. May you allow God to lead you properly, rather than what you think he's doing. Sometimes we behave with God the same way we do with our GPS in our cars. We get to certain locations and we think we know their place. So now when he says, turn left, you are overriding it. When you get the least opportunity, make a U-turn, you are not making the U-turn. The Holy Spirit is saying inside you, make a U-turn. You are not making the U-turn until you crash. May the Lord help you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So Jesus said something very profound again. Back in the point that his date is still on number one. I will run through the rest quickly. But then I want this to sink in. Then he says, I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The Bible says when he made this statement, it annoyed the people. Again, they wanted to attack him. Because those people he was talking to, they have read the Hebrew scriptures. They have read the scriptures. And they knew immediately that for him to say, you will see the son of man sitting at the hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds. When you combine these words, you have actually identified yourself as the only son of God expected by the Jews, the only savior of the word, as recorded and as prophesied genuinely word for word by the prophet Daniel. And that is why as soon as he made the statement, the Bible says they were ready to beat him. And they accused him that you being a mere man claim to be the son of God. So the exact words he used, you will see that in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 to 14. So when he says, are you the Christ? He said, yes, I am. Then he went further to tell them, you will very soon see the Son of Man sitting on the clouds. And in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, is that in your Bible? Are we there? Can I hear an amen? 
Daniel said, as I was watching in the night visions, behold, one like the son of man. Is that in the Bible? Did Jesus say son of man? I mean, son of God and son of man, which one would you like to prefer? Well, every one of us would have loved to say son of God. But at a certain point, he describes himself as son of man. And he's making a direct or indirect statement to the devil, you can't disturb me. Because you can't, the devil might be saying to him, you can't save these people because you are God. You are spirit. And he claimed to be the son of man. Amen. It has to be man to save man. The Bible says, as I was watching the night visions, behold, one like the son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall never be destroyed. So when he made that claim, they understood it. They knew he has made reference to exactly the prophecy in Daniel that this shall be the domain of the Messiah. That he will have an everlasting kingdom and at the mention of his name every knee shall bow and nothing shall stand before him. And he was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. So right before this mighty man and this women and this panel that he has appeared before, he made a very solid uncompromising claim to deity that he is God. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. We also see in John chapter 16 verse 23 that he, he taught his disciples to pray in his name. In his name. So whatever you ask the Father in my name, it shall be granted. No mortal, no ordinary human can say that. Ask God things in, in my name. Only pray in my name. Amen. Point number two. Second reason why Jesus is God, or the claim he made, is that he claimed that he and the Father were one and that he was the Son of God. He said he, he, he and the Father are one and that he is and was the Son of God. John chapter 10 verse 30 to 36. Jesus said in the verse number 30, I and my Father are one. I and my father are one. They are united. Amen. In nature is one. It's one God. Verse 33. Then the Jews answered and said to him, For a good work we will not stone you. But for blasphemy, because you being man, make yourself God. Have you seen it there? The people he was talking to, they understood the prophecies of old. So the moment he said, I and my father are one, they did not understand it to mean that we do things together. They, understand, they understood it to mean that you are essentially God in nature. And that's why they told him that we are going to stone you. Not because of the fact that you are doing some good work, but because you as a human being, you make yourself God. Hallelujah. And then, verse 36, do you say, then he answered them, do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the son of God? Glory be to Jesus. He went on, he just spoke matters further for them, saying, you, 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 are, you, are you questioning the fact that I am the son of God? I am indeed the son of God. Amen. I like it to put it this way. He is God, the son. Amen. And God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, one of them is not subordinate to the other. So the Holy Spirit is not their junior brother. He's not their youngest brother. He's equally God. Amen. In fact, when it came to the birth of Jesus, we are told it is the Holy Spirit that overshadowed Mary. And that holy thing that came out of her was called the Son of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her. If I overshadow my wife and Abishai appeared, whose son is Abishai? <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Jesus claimed that to know him was to know God. He said, if you know him, you have known God. That's a very serious claim. So as soon as you know me, as soon as you know who I am, you have known God. What does that mean? That means he is God. Is that not it? Let's see it. 
This is what he said. This morning, what I'm presenting to you are the things he said about himself. Because we will believe him for that. In Jesus' name. John chapter 14 and the verse number 7 to 9. Jesus said, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and you have seen him. He's talking to his disciples. Then he said to them, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him because you have seen him. And they are wondering, we haven't seen the father. Since you started this ministry, it's only you we have been moving with. Even this Holy Spirit you have been talking about, we don't know how he looks like. It's you we have seen. And now suddenly you are telling us that if we know you, we have known the father. And that we have also seen him. I love Philip. Then Philip says, Lord, 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 show us the father and it to be sufficient for us because we, we have seen you. We want to, I mean, if, honestly, I would like to look at the face of the father. I want to see how he looks like. If I want person I want to really see is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh, but the scripture never gave us anything for The only thing is that certain things are used to describe him. A dove, cloud, rain, water, fire, all these things. But he's a person. A person doesn't necessarily have to have human form. That's why Ephesians 6, 10 to 17, when it talks about spiritual warfare, he says, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but we are fighting against persons without physical bodies. So the Bible says, you have now seen him. Philip says, show us the Father. It will be sufficient for us. Verse 9, Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long? And yet you have not known me, Philip. They are asking to see the father. They say, don't you know me? Uh, what, what do you understand by what he's saying? Glory be to Jesus. Then he said, he who has seen me has seen the father. So how can you say, show us the father? When I'm standing before you, he who has seen me has seen the father. May you know Jesus as the father. May you know Jesus as God. Hallelujah. May we know Jesus. This morning he said, if you have seen the father, you have seen me. Some of us want to bypass him and we want to see the Father. It's not possible. Verse um, number four, point number four. To see him was to see God. Amen. The fourth claim of Jesus as God is that he says, when you see him, you have seen God. When you see him, you have seen God. John 14, verse 9, and then John 12, 45. Jesus said to him, have I been with you for so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? John chapter 12, verse 45, he says, and anyone who sees me, sees him who sent me. Anyone who has seen me has automatically seen the one who sent me. So Jesus is saying, if you see him, you have seen God. And none of all these prophets and founders of religion have ever been bold to make such a claim. Glory be to Jesus. The fifth claim, it says to receive him is to receive God. If you receive him, you have received God. And Matthew chapter 10 verse 40, Jesus said, anyone who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. Amen. To receive him, is to receive God. So he's laying some very serious claims here. The sixth claim is that if you believe in him, you have believed in God. Jesus said, if you believe in him, you have believed in God. John chapter 12 and the verse number 44. The Bible says, and Jesus cried out and said, anyone who believes in me, believes not in me, but in the one who sent me. He said, if you believe in him, you have actually automatically believed in the one who sent him. So if you believe in him, you have believed in God also. Amen. The seventh claim, to honor him is to honor God. He said if you honor him, you are honoring God. John 5, 23. The Bible says that all may honor the son just as they honor the father. Whoever does not honor the son of God does not honor the father. 
Is that in your Bible? Amen. Anyone who does not honor the Son of God does not honor the Father. So it's very odd for someone to say, as for me, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus. It's, it's odd. This morning I came to present Jesus Christ to you. So that when you claim to be a Christian and you are called by his name, you know how to walk with him because you have understanding in Jesus' name. The eighth reason, the eighth claim, is that Jesus claimed authority over life and death. And no man has ever, does, if you're a human being, mortal man and woman, born of a woman, you can't make such a claim. That you, you have authority over death and life. You can't make that claim. But look at him here. I love Jesus. I will give up everything for Jesus. Amen. Your faith is not in vain. The Bible says he claimed authority over life and death. John chapter 5 verse 21. Jesus said, for as the father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the son of God gives life to whom he will. He said, I give life. I too, I can give life to anybody I will. I thought this is only the preserve of anybody who is God. It is only God who is the source of life, the giver of life and the taker of life. And here we have Jesus Christ walking the streets of Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria. And he said that I give life too, just as the Father gives life. But let's look at further things. Maybe so, so this thing is not very clear in verse 21. Please, let's come to John chapter 10, verse 17 to 18. Uh, which of the translations should I even start from? Living Bible, New Living Translation, King James. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take it from, let's take it from all of them. <laughs> New Living Translation first. Oh, let's say, have you already gone to King, King James? New King James. Okay, let's stay, let's stay. New Kojovi, let's stay there. <laughs> KJV. <laughs> Jesus said, Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Who can make such a claim? I lay down my life and I take it again. He says, And no one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it. Um, no one can take my life from me, but I lay it down for my, of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. <laughs> I have power to lay down my life in death, and I have power to take it back. You can only be God to make such a claim. So even though he was walking the earth, he was fully God and fully human. He wasn't partially God and partially human. He was fully God and fully human. And in heaven, there's a strange sight. Because for the first time in the history of the existence of the Godhead eternal, there is one of them that is fully God and fully human. Christ ascended to heaven with his human body. And he's coming back again. Hallelujah. Let's look at the New Living Translation version. It says, the father loves me because I sacrificed my life so I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily. For I have the authority to lay down my life when I want to and also to take it up again. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. And this is what the father has commanded. I have authority to take it. Can you put down your life and take it again? When we were growing up, there were some magicians. There was one of them, Conrad. The guns call him Connolly. If you come from Osu, you know. He will come and dance and say, could you imagine? Then he does, and then he will, he will kill his son. His son is Judas. Jesus, he has got sons, Judas and Jesus. Then he kill them for three days. And come, this is all magic. But Conrad is dead. That man, he has died. Jesus said, he will put his life down and take it again. Glory be to Jesus. Are you here? 
All right, though. Okay, at least we've got the understanding, so let's move on. The next scripture to support that is John chapter 11, the fact that he can take his, he can put his life down and take it back again. In John eleven twenty five 25 to 26, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. This is NLT. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who believes in me and believes in me, anyone who lives in me and believes in me will never ever die. Do you believe this matter? He said, if you believe in him, you will never die. What a promise. In Jesus' name. And when he says you will never die, it doesn't mean that physically and medically you are not going to die. But what he's saying is that even when doctors declare that you are clinically dead, you continue to live eternally in him. Because in him is life. And this life is the light of man. As I've always said, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and that moment comes, and doctors assess you and declare that you are clinically dead, then you are dead. If you don't know Jesus and you die, you are dead. But if you know Jesus and you are declared dead, you are sleeping. May your faith rise in God. In Jesus' name. Look at the living Bible translation in John eleven twenty five. 25. It says, Jesus told her, I am the one who raises the dead and gives them life again. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies like anyone else, shall live again. He is given eternal life for believing in me and shall never perish. Do you believe this? This morning I came to ask you the same question. Do you believe this? If you believe it, then make a choice to serve him. Hallelujah. I'm setting the stage for you to make a choice to serve Christ. That's why some of us, when we are crazy serving God, some of you don't understand. I understand he is God. Hallelujah. Some people have to commit suicide for their God. But my God came down to die for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Which God would you choose? One day, in that same scenario before, when he was speaking to uh, Martha, because Lazarus had died, that's when he came around and he showed himself. That, and he said to him, said to Martha, your brother will live again. And Martha was thinking, maybe he's talking about the future. So he says, your brother will live again. Martha said, I know that one day he will rise at the resurrection. Jesus is talking now. I came to prophesy to someone, that business that appeared dead shall live again. That boom that the doctors has declared unable and unable to, unable to have a child shall live again. That marriage shall live again. That child of yours shall come back to his senses again. That daughter of yours is not lost forever. He shall, she shall be restored again. When in Jesus, whatever appeared lost is not lost. It can come back again. I came to announce to someone this morning, in the name of the Lord Jesus, your health shall spring back again. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. I don't know what is legally against you, but by the power in the name of Jesus, let there be life today. In Jesus' mighty name, shout I believe. Number nine. Number nine. It's amazing when you say number nine. There's a code name for a tribe in Ghana. Called number nine. Sometimes I have authority to talk about them because my wife is from that tribe. Number nine. And there's quite a lot of number nines in the house. You can see Celia is from the number nine community. Brother Prosper, number nine. Sister Precious, number nine. Tracy, number nine and number one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. All right, though, let's go on. Number nine. He claimed to be the Messiah. Jesus claimed to be the Messiah. In John chapter 4, verse 25 to 26, in the Living Bible Translation, the Bible says the woman of Samaria said to him, at least we know that the Messiah will be coming. The one they call Christ. And when he does, he will explain everything to us. Verse 26, then Jesus told her plainly, I am the Messiah. 
This is one of the rare places in scripture that he actually claimed to be the Messiah. Clearly. He said, I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. I'm the one everyone is expecting. I am. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. May Jesus show up. We'll continue to pray for the Jews that they will recognize him as Savior. As Messiah. That's why they were very upset because he's claiming to be something that they have been looking forward to. I remember some years ago whilst I was in Israel and I was received by the, um, the minister for tourism of, of the state of Israel. And whilst we were talking, he said to me, well, I know that the only difference between us is that you believe that he is the Messiah and that he has come. We, we are expecting him. Then he said to me, one day when he comes, I will ask him whether he has been here before. I said, you better believe him before he comes. <laughs> because he has, he has already come as savior. And he's coming back again, not as savior, but as judge. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. He claimed to be the Messiah. And number 10, finally, he claimed to be the only way by which you get reconciled to God. The only way. John chapter 14 and the verse number 6. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. What a statement. I am the way. And those of us who studied English language as well, in addition to our science, study English very well. You realize that the word the, T-H-E, is a definite article. And that means that it is not a way. Whenever, if it's, it has been, I am a way, then it means that there are other options. But when it says, I am the way, it means that there's no other. This is the only way. So it's not like people can say, oh, oh there are many ways to Woolwich, Lady Franklin's hometown. So, Every time I call her, she's, she's around Woolwich. She's going to Woolwich to go and buy something. <laughs> Salvation is not like there are many ways. There is only one way. Amen? The gods are not the way. Islam is not the way. Amen. Buddhism is not the way. Shintoism is not the way. Zoroastrianism is not the way. Jesus the Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by him. And all these religious leaders, one day will stand before him to be judged. Glory be to Jesus. Sometimes Islam makes some very frivolous claims. Muhammad was born 700 years after Jesus had come and gone. How can you claim anything towards him? How do you claim that Ishmael and Abraham, they are Muslims? There was no Muslim until 700 BC. Um, yeah. AD. Post. That is after Christ. Anno Domine. AD. I mean, Muhammad doesn't know, um, Abraham doesn't know Muhammad. How was he a Muslim before? Please, read your Bible. In Jesus' name. He has no equal. I said he has no equal. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He has no rival. Glory be to Jesus. Truth is bitter, but that's the only thing that can cure you. In the name of Jesus. He is the only way. The truth and the life. John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him will not perish, but to have everlasting life. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him will not perish but to have everlasting life. When you believe in Jesus and you walk in his ways, automatically you have everlasting life. May the Lord help us this morning. 
May you recognize Jesus as your Savior. May you decide to serve him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your voice wherever you are. Begin to pray for yourself and speak to God and say, Lord, I want to know you more. These are the claims that Christ made. Ten of them. He's the only way. <laughs> He's the only way. He's the only way. The truth and the life. In Jesus' mighty name. Marco Saparata Kabaha. E Rama Kapranda Lamaba. E Kalamaba Sebrianta Lamaba. If Jesus is God and he's owed the same honor as God, then a person cannot reject Jesus Christ and claim to be right with the Father. Calling Jesus as only one of the many ways to God is to dishonor him. By calling him a liar, downgrading him to something less than divine, or merely a good teacher dishonors him. In short, those who reject the divinity of Christ are also rejecting God himself. This morning, may Jesus Christ make himself known to you. May Christ be made manifest this morning. Come, Holy Spirit. Open our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name. If you don't have this understanding, when you see challenges of life, you may think there is no hope. You may start going to other places to look for help, but there's no other place. Where help can be found, except in Jesus Christ. Sabarianta kataba. It is Jesus who said, I, I can put down my life and take it. It means if your life is a threat, under any level of threat, it is only Christ that can rescue you. The Bible says that today if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. The Bible says that except we believe Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and confess with our mouth that God raised him from the dead, then we shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If today is the only day you have to live. And you are presented with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What choice would you make? He has made serious ten claims. Ten serious claims. Which I have presented to you this morning. You see your God. How well are you serving this God? Based on this understanding, I want you to pray that, Lord, help me to serve you better. And if you are in this room and you are not born again, I want you to take a step wherever you are and come to where I'm standing. That I can lead you to Jesus. You want to give your life to Jesus? I'm here to present him to you. Thank you, Jesus. the one we can pray to in the next two minutes talk to him right now and ask him for his help and his strength he's the one that can make a way where there seems to be no way he's the only way he's the only way that's why we can not believe him and walk in unholiness it's an insult to the price he paid for you Serve the Lord in all honesty. Thank you, Jesus. You are God from beginning to the end. Him who sits on the throne, worship him right now. Now you understand he's God. He said, Where two or three gather in his name, he's right here. There's no place for Give him the worship. Congregation, lift up your hands, everyone. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his great countenance on you and give you peace. I pray that by the revelation of the word of God, may the word profit you today. May God open channels of blessing. May Jesus fight your battles for you. I declare that the rest of this week shall be peaceful. This shall be your best week. In the name of Jesus, you will not be bereaved. 
your sons and daughters will not die. No parent will bury their child. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Lord establish you as a holy people and make you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. In Jesus Christ's most excellent and holy name, and the people of God shout amen. And now turn to somebody and tell the person, Jesus Christ is Lord. So believe him and serve him. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. You are blessed with irrevocable blessings to increase and to influence. Amen and amen. <laughs>